So no one can say there's any shortage of add-ons and plugins for Elementor and Elementor Pro. And in this video, I just want to say why I think premium add-ons for Elementor is one of those ones that needs to be in your toolbox. Best of all, the version we're going to take a look at is completely free. My name is Paul C and welcome to WP Tets, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so premium add-ons for Elementor. There's two versions available. There's the free version, which is what we are going to look at, and there's the pro version, which has a range of additional widgets. So what you need to do is go over to premiumaddons.com, download a copy, or go and do this through your dashboard through the plugin section. Once you've done that, you then have that installed and ready to start working. I've already gone ahead and done that, and as you can see, if we jump into the settings for the premium add-ons for Elementor, all the different add-ons or widgets are all available to be enabled and disabled. So if there's something you don't want to use, then you can simply disable it just to speed up the whole process of loading up everything inside Elementor and also on the front end of your site. So as you can see, there are a ton of options available. Many of these are overlapping with other plugins, but there's something that I really think is worth considering when you look at it using something like this. Now, before I go over what that is, let me just take you through and show you just some of the widgets you have available. Let's come in and create a new page. Once we've done that, we'll open up Elementor and we'll start taking a look at some of the widgets. A couple of things I need to do first of all, I'm using Ocean WP and I want to make sure that I get rid of the extraneous information, things like the different widths and so on that we have available. So I'm going to set this to 100% full width and disable any margins. Simply hit publish. And once I've done that, I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call this premium add-ons. And we'll just say edit with Elementor. That will open up Elementor and we can start taking a look at what widgets we have. So once the Elementor editor loads in, if we take a look on the left hand side where all our normal widgets are, we simply need to scroll down to the bottom. Once we've gone down there, we can see that we have a new set of options, which is the premium add-ons option. You can see we've got a range of different widgets available to us, premium banners, blog, buttons, carousels, and so on. So let's take a look at the blog, for example, just so I can show you how many different options you have available to customize what this does for you. So let's just simply drag over the blog option. You can see it looks very, very simple to start off with. We take a look at the left-hand side. We've got two tabs to start off with. We've got the image and we've got the content. And if we take a look at the actual layout itself, you can see it's quite a nice looking layout. In this sample, we have a zoom in effect on the image itself. Underneath, we have a brief overview of the content. We've got some meta information, the title and the different type of post types that we have. We can change all those different things. You can see at the moment with the zoom in effect for the hover, we could easily change that to something like blur. And you can see that will then update and we have the blur effect. We also got the option then for the color effect. So you can see we've got frame, diagonal, bordered, squared, and so on. So again, you can see we have a different effect when you mouse over. So we can combine those two different things to give some interactivity. If we come to the content section, you can see we have a ton of different options in there for how we can configure and lay everything out. So you can see we have grid, excerpt, we have the number of columns we want to display. So you can see we have two, three, four columns and so on. We can adjust the spacing in there. We can enable or disable the excerpt. We can easily come in and specify how long the excerpt is. We can also go in and enable and disable any of the metadata, any of the author information and so on. So you can see it's very easy and we can quickly go in and fine tune this to get exactly what we want to get a total look. We can also come in and adjust the alignment of things on the different types of devices we can view this on. So a ton of really cool options. If we jump to the style tab, you can see we also have a range of different options available in here as well. So we can go through and do things like we can change the actual fonts, we can change the image information, so we can change icon colors, overlay colors, border colors, tons of different options. Even coming down to the post format icon, so you can see where we've got this post icon, we can adjust that if we want to, make it larger, smaller, change the color on there, do whatever we want to make sure this ties in with the design that we want to end up with. So before we leave the blog entry behind, I want to just jump back with the content section because at the moment we're only displaying one actual blog entry. But if we want to display more, we can control that as well as the pagination. Now this is something you don't always get in all of these free versions, so it's good to see these included. So let's open up the content section, scroll down to the bottom, and you can see posts per page is set to one. Well, we can come in and we'll just say we'll set that to something like six, and you can see that now displays additional uh, sort of entries for your blog. You can set an offset if you want to in here, and you can also come through and just set, specify you want pagination on there. So it's very easy to do, and as you can see, everything looks pretty cool. 
Obviously, there's a couple of different blog entries on here that don't actually have any pictures at the moment, but you kind of get the idea. So that's just some of the things that I think are quite cool about this, but that's not the main reason why I want to show you this. There is something that I think, for the fact this is completely free, really does open up and make this a much more powerful plugin than a lot of the other options that are available for free. So let's just take in one of the other widgets and let me just demonstrate what I think is so good about this free set of plugins. So let's just say you want to use something like the premium banner. Drag and drop that into there and as you can see we can go through and we can set up all the various different things we want for our banner. So we can choose our image from here, we can simply come in, choose something we think is going to be relevant and let's just find something that meets the dimensions I need and we'll drop that in there. So you can see that now drops the image in and we can go to control all the different elements for it. Now this is pretty cool and like I say, straight out of the box, this is already quite a useful tool. But what we have with quite a few of the different options in here, or quite a few of the different widgets, is we have dynamic options built in. So if you wanted to create a premium banner and you wanted to tie this into something like advanced custom fields, you could very easily do that. So let's take a look at how we could integrate this kind of technology into a template system as part of Elementor Pro. So what I've done is I've already gone ahead and created an advanced custom field setup. I'll show you that briefly. So let's just simply come out of this, exit our dashboard. We'll come over then to our custom fields. Once we're in there, you can see I've created a custom banner section. If I open that up, you can see it's got three independent fields, a banner title, a message, and a banner image. I've also set that up to be in the post category, which is equal to custom banner. So in other words, once we select the category of post type to be custom banner, these extra three fields will open up and become available so we can start working. So if I jump over to the post section and take a look at all posts, I've already created a banner example. If I click to open that up, you can see we're in the custom banner section. I've simply got a title, I've got some text in there, there's filler text, and then we've got the three custom elements for our banner. With that done, the next thing we need to do is go in and set up the template. Now, if I'm going through this quite quickly and you're not used to working with advanced custom fields, I do have an advanced custom fields playlist, which I'll link in the description below and also at the top corner now, so you can check that out and get up to speed. And also, you're not limited to advanced custom fields. You could use this with pods. You could use it with anything that allows you to create custom fields and taxonomies and so on inside WordPress itself, so you could benefit from this extra sort of functions. Okay, so let's just jump over to Elementor into my templates. Once I'm in there, we're gonna create a new template. So we'll say add new. We're gonna specify that this is going to be a single. So in other words, this is for a single post page, whatever we want, so it's using the single template. Next up, we'll say the post type. So we'll say we want this to be a post, so it doesn't apply to pages, media, etc., and so on. We're gonna call this one banner test. And we'll just call this single so we know exactly what we're dealing with. And we'll say create the template. Now, don't worry if you're new to templates. They're very, very easy to work with. It's exactly the same as working with Elementor itself, but we can use those to replace the various key templates that make up part of WordPress. Once we've built the design, we can then set up the condition that will be used to display that post. Again, this is something I've covered in depth in other videos. and I'll link something in the description below so you can check that out, like I say, if this is something that's new to you. Now, I'm not going to go through the process of building something from scratch. I'm simply going to come in and use something that's already been designed. So I'm going to use one of the predefined templates. So we'll choose this one. This works fine for me. And we'll just click on Insert. We say, yes, we're happy with the document settings. That will now load in the template that's been created for us as part of Elementor and Elementor Pro. So you can see this has pulled in some basic information. So the banner example was the post we created. There's our Laura Mipsum filler text. I haven't set any image up to be at the top of the page for the sort of featured image just yet. But if we had something in there, that would display at the top. So all the things are in there except for our custom fields inside that new custom banner. So let's put that in now. Let's just say we want this banner to be something that draws attention above the actual content itself, but sitting below the meta information and the title. Well, let's just come over to the right, uh, the left-hand side, and we'll simply come in and we'll just search for the widget that we want, which is going to be the banner. We'll say we'll drag that over, position it where we want in the flow of our template. And you can see there's the basic layout. No image, no text, just some filler information. Now let's just use these dynamic options to link those through to those custom fields. So we click on dynamic, come down to ACF, or if, like I say, if you're using pods or something else, it'll be a different section, but it'll work in the same way. We click to expand that out. We then click on the little cog or the little wrench icon and specify what field or key is going to be used. So we know this is the banner image because that's the custom field we set up. 
So we'll set that in there. You'll see that now loads in the image. If you want to place a fallback image, you can do that by simply selecting an image from your library. And let's just say we'll just use something like this one. So if for any reason someone doesn't upload an image as part of the banner, it'll display our fallback image. So that's quite useful. Jump over to the content section, or we can do the same again now for the actual title and for the description itself. Click on the little cog icon, the little disc icon I should say, scroll down until we find the ACF field, click on there, then click on the little wrench icon, choose the key field which is going to be our banner title, and then we're going to come down to the same then for the description. So we'll click on the little disc icon, scroll down to ACF, choose ACF field, then click on the wrench icon, choose the key and we'll say we want this to be the banner message. So naming things to make sense when it comes to selecting these keys and so on is kind of a really good practice to make sure that you know exactly what you're selecting is in the right place when you're filling this information out. So that's very, very basic examples. We can hit publish on there, and you see this now takes us through to the conditions. So what we want to do is we want this to be all posts. We want this only to apply when it fits into a particular post category. So we say posts in category, just go in and select them where it says all. And what we're going to do is go start typing in banner. That'll search through all the categories you have. You can see custom banner is the custom taxonomy we use or the custom sort of category we use. Click on that and say publish. So what that does now is any other sort of uh, post that's going to be displayed that's not inside that specific category will just use the ordinary template that's part of WordPress. Anything that's inside that banner category will use this custom template we've just created. So that's our template done. All the conditions are set up. Everything is completed in there. Let's just come back out of this, exit to our dashboard. We'll come back to our posts and all posts. And once we're in there, there's our banner example. Let's click to open that up. We'll just quickly come in and we'll just say, let's take a look at what this looks like. So we'll preview the changes on there. And you should find that will now show us with our custom banner all laid out. Now, obviously, we haven't styled this. That's not a problem. You can do that if you want to. But you can see there's our custom banner, our custom layout. Come back out of this, go back to all posts, and let's choose a different post that's not inside that custom banner category. So you can see before and after test, if we open that up, and we'll say preview changes, this is now going to use a completely different template and show us a completely different layout. So you can see we've got a custom layout for this one, a custom layout for our custom banner section, and we've linked that through to advanced custom fields and the dynamic information we've created for our custom post type. And that's just scratching the surface of what you can do with the premium add-ons for Elementor, the completely free version. There are a ton of widgets available inside there. Lots of them have this dynamic functionality built in. So I recommend downloading this, installing a copy, and also taking a look at how you can link that dynamic information in. Even if you don't want to do that and link it with advanced custom fields or pods, etc., the widgets themselves are great. They work really, really well. And the ability to just sort of quickly go in, enable and disable the different widgets you want to use is something that I love to see in all the different sort of packs of widgets that you have for Elementor and Elementor Pro. Now I'm going to leave the video there because I think I've covered more than is enough in this particular topic. But what I would do is I would suggest you go and take a look at the premium adults for Elementor, download it, install it, test it out, see what you think of it. Something I would say is worth checking out. And the free version just gives you tons of really cool features. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But don't forget to tell me why you didn't enjoy the video. As always, if you've got any comments, questions or feedback, pop those in the comment section below. If you'd love to support the channel, please use the links in the description description below. They're affiliate links, but they cost you no more money. And it does give a small percentage back to the channel to help support what we do around you. As always, my name has been Paul C. This has been WP Tatson. Until next time, take care.